Logan is playing what looks like basically uh, Jerry's List from the Invitational, Shardless Bug. Uh, I'm not familiar enough with Jerry's List to know if he changed anything. I know it doesn't look like uh, many of the card choices are any different. He has the one ma main deck Maelstrom Pulse that I know Jerry was uh, pretty happy with. And beyond that, his sideboard looks far and away the same. Yep. Jensen leads off with an Underground Sea again in the deck to facilitate Thought Seas. Turn one vision. This is a matchup that I talked to. I talked to Jensen. He feels very comfortable playing. Sure. He, he likes his matchup generally speaking against sort of random control decks. Yeah. Post board, uh, he has access to Leyland Sanctity, which is a huge backbreaker against Bug because they lean on almost exclusively discard and force a will to stop you. Like that's like the only thing they can do. Yep. Baleful Strix starts the beat down. Belfort Strix, uh, you know, capable of blocking an Ember Cool, but if it comes to that, you've usually got bigger problems. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you need a, quite a few permanences to survive the Annihilator trigger to begin with. So, it appears from what I saw in his hand, Logan actually has a Force of Will to defend himself. Yeah. Uh, uh, unclear if that's going to be sufficient, but. Huey, it looks like he has two Force of Wills, but no other blue card? Kind of Correct, he has a Tarmogoyf yeah. and some lands. Uh, Huey looks like has a Force of Will and lands. And uh, I didn't see much else beyond that. City of Traders among those lands, though. Uh, so he can, you know, threaten to turbo out some nonsense. Michael Burnett. fetching for a Volcanic at the end of the turn. And we'll see. This this could be... Usually this, this stage of the game signals that there's about to be some fireworks. Yeah, that de definitely is a possibility. Up, oh, I see. Yeah, he's got plenty of cards there. He's got Show and Tell and an Emrakul, I believe, with a Force. Does he have another blue card? Because if he does, you know, it would be very difficult to uh, dissuade anyone from trying it. Draws a sneak attack. Looks like he short the extra blue card, but has everything else, including uh, a sneak attack and Crystal Brand. Well, he can just, if that's the case, he can just go. Yeah. City of Traders sneak attack and go for the win next turn. Right. The bug deck with not a lot of ways to get out from a from a sneak attack in play, possibly a maelstrom pulse in the deck, but he's gonna go for the show. Uh, I agree that I would probably want the sneak here, especially considering you know you don't necessarily know exactly what bug deck your opponent's on. Maybe they have Liliana's. Uh, Jerry has recently you know championed this particular version, but you know people will add whatever cards they add. Yep. A land for Logan, so left with just Tarmogoyfs, it looks like, and some lands. Now he's going to go ahead and play that Tarmogoyf and uh, cross his fingers that Huey has nothing else, but as we know, Huey has lots of other stuff. The question is uh, if, if Justin has the second red source. Uh, looks like he might be light here. Yep, just puts the sneak attack into play. One of the other upsides to going sneak attack first uh, is that you can you know, threaten show and tell and a sneak attack activation in the same turn. Yep. Not necessarily a big deal, but uh, it could certainly matter. Logan plays his draw step, Death Ray Chum. Holding the Strix back for D. <laughs> uh, I guess he's crossing his fingers on uh, Gristlebrand pretty much then. Yes. That's the, that's the plan for that. The one point probably doesn't matter too, too much. So I think that's reasonable to hold back there. Sure. Huey, uh, he does, I believe, have a Gristle Brand, and if I'm him, I'm probably pretty tempted to put in a play and draw the seven. No, he's going to. I would be, you know, hoping to hit that second red source, really, really get them, as it were. Yep. So that's everything except the Strix, and in before Ancestral Vision, which is perfect timing. So Huey going to reshuffle. And then Logan has to hope to be able to reassemble and reapply before Jensen can find another one of his monsters. Sure. Now, Huey's been playing this deck for several months now, like since the, the Vegas Open. So it's been kind of interesting to see his, his odyssey with it, as it were. Uh, yes. Sideboard cards, colors, obviously, you know, we see the additional thought scenes here. He also has Jace's in the sideboard, which is a, a card people have played in the architect before, but it's not uh, necessarily ubiquitous, I would say. Right. So Huey thought sees after the Emrakul saw just a handful of lands, Ancestral came out, 
came off suspend, and Huey forced it. So we'll see if he's able to. He's probably going to be able to piece this one together. That's my guess. If uh, if I did see a gristle brand correctly, then that's pretty clearly the the go this time. But it looks like I did not. In fact, that was probably the thought sees uh, that we believe was the black herd. So Logan has found a Tumberglyph, it appears. So that's a clock. Yep. He's going to need to race it. Just in under the gun steps. to find, like I said, another one of his another one of his monsters. I think he has another sneak attack in his hand. Yeah. Uh, he needs to find a monster or cantrip his way into one. Both of those things, you know, pretty doable. Okay. Quick price check. <laughs> I'm guessing it's five. That sounds about right. We've got artifact creature, instant sorcery land. Oh, we got something. Ponder. Gotta love a sweat. Yep. Looks like another ponder. Yeah, ponder, pedal, sneak. So he can take the ponder, shuffle with the tarn. Yep. Give himself a lot, a lot more looks. Yeah, he's going to be basically just wash, rinse, repeating here. And you know, any of them are pretty good. Yep. He still has enough life points to, uh, you know, sneak in a gristle brand. And you know, activate if he wants. A little, a little gutsy. Well, he can activate if he wants to. If he doesn't find Emrakul in the top seven, he can just attack. Yeah. I would assume find something in, in the cards you're looking at. Ideally, there would be spells in the seven. He was running in trouble with that before, however. Uh, in his Las Vegas Open top four, when a Gristlebrand for seven did not necessarily reveal very many useful things. And he just found Gristlebrand, it looks he like. He did. I imagine he's going to keep those three. Yep. He's uh, probably now moving on to thinking, like, how I should I play this Gristle Brand? Do I want to play Activate? Do I want to just get him? I imagine play Activate. Also noteworthy about Jensen's list, in contrast to a lot of sneak attack lists that I've seen on the open circuit, all four of us in the main deck. That is interesting. Uh, the combo, uh, combo deck's combo yep. deck. He knows what he wants. Looks like he, uh... He's just going to use Gristlebrand as a blocker here. I saw them yeah. do this in his text match the other time. A lot of people don't even anticipate this being a thing that can happen. So he's going to abruptly hit the Goyf to prevent the block. Yeah, I think this works out fine for for, uh, for Huey, obviously. You know, he was looking for a, you know, a 1 for 7, and instead he got a 2 for 1. Right. Uh, but he still is going to draw 7 because he doesn't have to worry about the threat. He accomplished his goal, either yep. way. Yeah, he said a lot of people don't even realize that's a thing that can happen because they're so used to seeing attack just attacking. Yep. Uh, we weren't discussing that play, but one of the other uh, utilities of it is obviously utilizing your opponent's end step to keep the creature around, which is one of the ways to get around having access to only a single red mana but needing two creatures. Yep. And Logan, with his hand on his graveyard, already anticipating <laughs> the concession, a concession shortly, I believe. Yeah, he does not appear confident, I would say. But uh, what is, does Huey have an Emrakul? Can't, can't really see. I know he has a, a, a cantrip or two, it looks like. Yep, that's an Emrakul. That, that might be exactly what Logan needs to, to earn it. No? Just another Armageddon yep. already. Cleanse you. I really haven't seen someone get hit this many times by an ever. The, sec the first one is usually good enough. Mm -hmm. The second one is is yeah. an all, like certainly good enough. Now, it's it's very rare uh, that you need to be attacked by Emrakul for a third time. You know, amusingly enough, uh, I have not actually played against Emrakul that much in Legacy. I'm more used to playing it against it in Standard and Modern when it was legal in the uh, yep. the former format. And uh, it's a lot more beatable in those, in my experience. <laughs> <laughs> Significantly more beatable. Discards an excess sneak attack, the promo variety. If you're a fan of Leaping Blizzards, that might be right up your alley. You be forced to find a third fatty? He does. I think we just found a Emrakul number three. There are a lot of tentacles. On that Emrakul. And Jensen pretty easily wins the first game. 
Yeah, you know, uh, he you know, had to find multiple fatties, had to put it together a couple times, actually, against Logan's resistance, but did not find it difficult. Mm -hmm. And especially after the first Emrapool connect, uh, that really left Logan just, you know, kind of swimming for shore pretty hard. Yep. So onto our, our sideboard here. I know that that William is certainly bringing in his two copies of Jace and his two copies of Red Elemental Blast. Those are the go-to, his go-to cards basically for mm -hmm. any sort of blue control deck. Jace gives you a different, basically it's just another haymaker that you can resolve. Jace might as well be show and tell or sneak attack on a ton of boards. If you play it on a stable board, you have a ton of inevitability. Yep. And you get to play a little more of a normal normal game and it gives you a lot more durability against resistance. All the thoughts he's using extra counter spells you should anticipate playing against the post board games. Whether or not he goes to Leyline of Sanctity is a different question. Uh, against a deck like Jund, Leyline of Sanctity is lights out. It's a little sketchier against decks that have both discard and counter spells because you can Leyline and still they get they still have resistance. So I don't know if it's gonna move uh, Leyline into his deck as well, but certainly Jace and Red Elemental Blast will be coming in. Yeah, I know that at the Atlanta Invitational, we got to actually see this matchup in the quarterfinals with uh, Jerry T on Shardless Bug and Philip Lauren on Sneak and Show. And Philip did bring in the ley lines. Uh, Jerry trimming, as he said in his article on the topic, his discard in anticipation of that, uh, but concerned that that could come back to bite him if Philip figured it out, sides the ley lines back out. Yep. Uh, so I, it really depends on how the Shardless Bug player sideboards, I imagine, as to how high impact the ley lines are. So we'll kind of be curious to see if, you know, maybe Logan read that article, knows what's up, uh, maybe sideboards in anticipation. Uh, as far as his actual sideboard, the cards he does have, uh, Liliana the Veil can create pressure against, uh, you know, a deck that does need two cards in its hand in order to win. Uh, he has access to another Hymn to Torok, which would bring him up to four total. He has two Thought Seizes. Uh, he already has two in the main, so that's two more. Does not have any Inquisition of Kozlix, however. And he does have access to two copies of Sower of Temptation. So of Temptation, with the potential to be awesome if Show and Tell is the route Jensen goes to to get right. his creature to play. Uh, one of the powers of Sneak and Show, obviously, and especially Jensen's list, you know, he can put in a Sneak Attack, uh, he can put in a Jace with, you know, just lands. <laughs> uh, so those are two cards that Silver of Temptation is incredibly ineffective against, but should uh, Huey, you know, cast Show and Tell, hoping to put an Emrakul or a Gristlebrand in, Silver of Temptation will make that really awkward. What is also noteworthy about all those cyborg cards that you mentioned, with the exception of Sower Temptation, is they're all in the crosshairs of White Ley Line. Yep. So even if White Lane isn't particularly good against Logan in a, like game one theoretically, if you could add right. Ley Line to your deck, it wouldn't necessarily be that excellent there. If Logan is cyborging that way, Ley Line certainly becomes much better in the post board games. Right, that's, that's actually, the bug decks tend to just really heavily lean on discard spells because that's the best way for them to be able to fight combo decks like Sneak and Show and Storm and even Dredge at, all at the same time. You know, those cards, everyone has something key that you don't mind thought seizing out of their hand on turn mm -hmm. one. Uh, him being incredible against Storm. Uh, but, you know, you can really get punished when your opponent has access to something like Leyline or can just sidestep you. Yes. It's pretty, pretty cool to see when I've seen so many Sneak and Show lists that are, you know, one Fluster Storm, two Spell Pierce, a Misdirection, etc., etc. Just seeing, yep, we have we have ten four ofs. Yeah, these are, like the, these are the these are the cards that are good game one. I, I see that Huey also has access to through the breaches. I imagine that's mirror technology, right? Uh, when you have to bring out those show and tells. Uh, yes, or matchups where you are not under duress. I think against decks like Burn Through the Breach is also reasonable because sure. they're not going to be countering your stuff. So you, you just, just want, want more nut draws. Right. Okay, that makes total sense. Creeping Tarpet versus Fetchland to start things off. Uh, Logan, nothing on two. Looks like he did bring in Liliana. We see it in his hand. He's just drawn a Thought Seize. He also has Charlotte's Agent he could cast yeah. this turn, so a lot of options. Yeah, it's tempting to, to play any of them. I, I think I would probably want to go with either the Liliana or the Charlotte's Agent for the sake of mana efficiency. Tapping out for Liliana, obviously, you know, pretty scary when you could just die. Yeah. <laughs> Playing just the thought seeds here is is rough just from a mana efficiency standpoint, but all, any of his three drops could definitely result in just instant death if Huey's hand's any good at all. Yeah. I, I would probably want to go with the uh, Shardless Agent, hoping my opponent would capitalize on my tapping out with a show and tell instead of a sneak attack. And that way I can resolve Liliana the Veil on the next turn, just kill whatever they get. Yep. With thought seeds backing it up. So, Charlotte's Agent, 
finds a brainstorm. Brainstorm finds a Charlotte Agent and two more <laughs> lands. Uh, Charlotte Agent also obviously a clock, which is you know what you need to play against the combo deck. Otherwise, they can feel free to just assemble on you as many times as possible. Yeah. Shardless Bug, uh, one of its strengths is in post-board games. Jerry said that, in fact, he felt like he was behind in most game ones with the deck, but really liked how he could sideboard to make his deck perfect. Uh, and one of the re keys to that is definitely Shardless Agent. Uh, you know, once you, you know, say for this matchup, remove, th remove things like Abrupt Decay and can only cascade into, you know, Hindatorox or Thought Seizes yep. or Brainstorms, as we just saw, that's way better. Yes. Huey draws a show and tell. So now, you know, does he want to put Logan to the test here? Let's see an ancient tomb. Mm, looks like he's going to go for something else. Yeah, sneak attack. Sneak attack. That is the safer option. Yeah, he knows if that resolves that Logan's probably just not able to defend himself through counter magic. However, Logan knows my opponent plays sneak attack. I got to start thought season. Yeah. <laughs> Huey uh, appears to be considering a potential response. I think he has a force of will, it looks like. Yep. Yep. Force pitching blue card. Probably show and tell, I would be, I would I be guessing. I would assume. Once you have a sneak in play, you don't really need a, another one. And Logan goes for Shardless Agent number two. Ugh. It's a death rate shaman. Really needed that to be him or. Yeah. Him or Thoughtseize. And now, Logan may not get another turn. Yep. Uh, it is worth noting he actually cannot keep in enough permanents to really on avail right yeah, there. There it so is. That'll do it. Yep. Huey had double the fatties he needed. If you want to know why Huey likes that deck, that's, you just that, got clicking on it. It's, like this is just what it does. Huey jumps in 2-0, probably in a position to draw next round. Like now it. again, he did pick up a loss in round one, so his breakers are probably towards the end of it, but. We're kind of on the short side attendance-wise for nine rounds. It's true. So it's 